coming up on Star Salvation. Only one challenge stands between you and your dream for Food Network stardom. This is make it or break it time. I'm ready. It's time to do it. Get that charm. Iron Chef Alex Garnaschelli and Eddie Jackson, winner of Food Network Star Season 11, will mentor eliminated finalists from Food Network Star Woo! through a series of challenges that will prepare one of them for the second chance of a lifetime. Monterey and Yaku, congratulations on making it to the finale of Star Salvation. Thank you. Thank you. There's one person who can still spoil all of your plans. Please welcome the final challenger. Oh, I knew it! I knew it would be you guys. This is it. This is do or die. But I've got what it takes to make it happen. And I'm going to win this. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. Very happy to be here. You were among the final four on Food Network Star. Yeah. Your on-camera presentation on the Holiday Party Challenge was your best yet. But for that challenge, your food was disappointing. This is, like, not Anna. It's very bland. Yeah. Before we get to your final challenge, Alex is going to demonstrate a little dish for you. I want you to pay attention because this is going to be your chance to see just how a food star cooks up one of her favorite dishes. I'm from New York. I grew up across the street from one of the best delis in the city. All I really ever wanted was a BLT on toast. Sugar can be a force of nature. It sits on an ingredient, it gets inside it, and it takes it to another level. Watching Iron Chef Alex Garnaschelli do a presentation is like getting a basketball lesson from Michael Jordan. This is awesome. I need this acid and honey right on this bacon. She's using great food descriptors. She's interacting with us. I'm gonna take this sandwich and I'm gonna drop it right in here. Did you hear All that right, sound? That's what you wanna hear. The sizzle, uh... So good. That's the way it's done. I mean, my mouth was watering. Can I have a bite? Yeah. <laughs> we all were like, give us a bite of that now. Mmm. Is it good? Hold on. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is the best BLT I have had in my life. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty. So as you can see, Alex has made one of her hometown favorites. Now it's your turn to make your hometown favorite. After you're done cooking, you're going to present your dish in a 60-second camera challenge. This right here may be the most important dish of my life. Last one, guys. Your 30-minute chance to cook a hometown favorite starts right now. Oh, I am at a loss right now. <laughs> OK. I don't really have a hometown. We moved every two years growing up. What the hell am I doing? So I've settled on Pittsburgh. That's where my mom's from. And we'd go visit my grandfather all the time. I'm making a dish that revolves around kielbasa and mustard because Pittsburgh has a really large Polish population. That's what we ate. I'm not doing anything to this kielbasa other than grilling it and slicing it up. I have beets that I'm going to braise in the oven. For the sauce, I'm making a whole grain mustard sour cream with some fresh dill and lemon. This is just simple, home-style food, straight out of Pittsburgh. My hometown is Inkster, Michigan. And if there's one thing they know how to do there, it's barbecue. I'm making barbecue with the family. You know, barbecue, yaku, put them together. There we go. So my dish is a barbecue chicken thigh, topped with a nice barbecue crackling, a side of cheese corn, and drizzled with green goddess sauce. First thing I do is I season my chicken thighs in onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, chili, brown sugar, and coffee grounds. Once my chicken thighs are grilled to perfection, I'm gonna finish it off in the oven to make sure it's nice and tender. I'm taking a serious risk trying to pull off barbecue chicken in 30 minutes. Yeah, baby, get that char. Anna, what you making? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming make... it's something Cuban. Of course. As soon as they told us what the challenge was, I knew immediately that I would make my mom's sweet corn and chorizo fritters with garlic, aioli, and fried capers. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, and I have such fond memories of eating this at the beach growing up. To start my fritters, I'm gonna get some fresh corn on the cob, start cooking it down with some chorizo and scallions. This is my childhood on a plate. 12 minutes, guys, 12 minutes. What do we got going on here, chef? I always used to visit my grandparents in Pittsburgh. That was kind of my hometown. I'm roasting beets, potato a little crispy, not a chip. Like a little roasty? Yeah, like a little oh. roasty. I wanna portray to Alex and Eddie that I know what I'm doing. This confidence has to show in all areas of competition. And then we always going, which to... Where are we going? Come and on. I realized that I have butter and onions that are probably 
burned to a crisp. And I just burned onions. Come on, Monterey. This is no time to burn onions. Gotta redo my onions now. Latin mama. Ooh, now this whole area just smells incredible. It smells like my childhood. My mom used to fry these fritters up when I was little. So it's chorizo and it's corn, a garlic aioli with a little bit of uh, smoked pimento in it. The spicy childhood. It was a spicy childhood. I like it. I was it. a good girl, though. OK, see you later. I got to run and get my batter started. I put the eggs, I put the flour, and I run to the pantry and can't find the baking powder. Anna, what are you looking for? Are you... I'm looking for baking powder. I can't oh, see it anywhere. I have no idea what that is. I have looked at every white powder in this entire pantry. Where is it? Where is it? I don't see it. I can't make fritters without the baking powder. Five minutes left on the clock. Just five precious minutes. Run over to check on my chicken. Oh my god. It's still not done. Come on, chicken. Finish up. I was eliminated for Undercooked Lobster and Food Network Star. I'm not going to go out like this again. Oh, crazy. Finally, I find the baking powder that has been right there under my nose. Now that my fritter batter is made, I fry them just till they get golden brown and a little crispy on the outside. Time is ticking. Oh, hot, 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 hot. I'm trying to get these beets on the plate. I cut in and they're still too raw. So, bye bye beets. No more beets. We got 30 seconds left, guys. Come on, tighten it up. Give my chicken another check. It's perfect. Let's get this on the plate. Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Stop. All right, guys, I'm up first. All right. All right. Wish me luck. It's time for my presentation. I can't let my nerves get the better of me. Anna, you got 60 seconds to describe your hometown favorite. Five, four. They're counting down the seconds, and I'm sweating. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I have such fond memories growing up in a Cuban household where vacations meant modest little hotel rooms on Miami Beach where my mom cooked up the most delicious things like these sweet corn and chorizo fritters. My mother fried everything. Papers, olives, you name it. Watch it, Anna. She just doesn't seem excited about her food. And they tasted even better with the salty water in our hands. I mean, how can you do any better than this? Takes me back to the beach. I have to tell you, um, I loved the connection you made between having food at the beach and having salt water on your hands. Yeah. You connected a taste and a smell with a memory that's universal. The issue that I had was once you ate your food, you never really described what you were tasting. Oh. You had about five seconds left. In those five seconds, you could have got a few descriptive words out. Yeah, but I do want to try your food now. I lived in Miami for nine years. This is something that I would hang out on the beach all day, yep. just pop them in your mouth. They're yep. easy to eat. Kind of get that burst of saltiness from the capers, and then you get the sweetness from the corn. They're expertly fried. Technically speaking, you really executed a nice dish. Thank you, that means a lot. My presentation is good and my food is on point. I could win this. All right, guys, it's my turn. Knock him dead. This is my last and final presentation for Star Salvation. Go get them. It has everything riding on it. How you doing? I'm Chef Yaku, and I was born in Inkster, Michigan, a little city right outside of Detroit. My grandmother used to throw chicken thighs on a grill, and you can smell them from down the block. Yaku's presentation is good, but I don't think he's doing any better than I did. So I took grandma's chicken, and instead of going with a normal barbecue sauce, I added my own green goddess sauce. Chicken, corn, a delicious sauce, man. I think my granny's here. <laughs> I thought it was great. How you doing? I'm Chef Yaku. I mean, you've developed a tagline here. But I felt like you had a little issue with your flow. And that's only because you're trying to integrate the things that we've told you over the course of six weeks until your presentation. Let's taste your food. I'm a grill guy. I don't want to be disappointed. This is phenomenal. Thank you. Visually, the colors, you know, I can see texture on it. I can see the grill marks on the corn, on the chicken. The char, the sweetness of the corn, the herbs, it just all makes sense. Thank you so much. I did everything I wanted to do. I'm so happy that I'm able to show them this growth. Let's go, girl. Let's do this thing. Let's go, girl. Ooh. I've had problems with presentations the entire time. 
Hello. I'm really hoping <laughs> that I break the trend with this final presentation. Hey everyone, it's Monterey. Now, growing up, we didn't really have a lot of money, and also my mom wasn't exactly the best cook, so it was kind of a fend for yourself kind of deal. And now my favorite thing growing up was grilled kielbasa and mustard. Watching Monterey's presentation. I know we have these, these had no place at our table. I'm noticing a lot of that nervous energy. It's got the chanterelle mushrooms and the butter basted potatoes. It's like I'm back in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I think nerves are chewing at you a little around the edges because we're down to the wire. <laughs> you gave a lot of negatives. You know, you talked about how your mom really wasn't a good cook, uh -huh. and then you talked about you didn't have much money. As a viewer, I'm like, <gasps> I, I didn't mean for it to come across like that. No, so. no, I know. And when you're but, nervous, yeah. You know, the truth comes out. It's just something you gotta learn how to harness better. Yeah. Let's taste your food. All right. You can cook. Thank you Like, very seriously. Much. I love the flavor components that you've got going on there with the dill that goes amazing with this grain mustard that you have. The mushrooms are almost meatier than the kielbasa. You have a real hand with vegetables. Thank you. You are a tremendous cook. Thank you very much. I worked really, really hard. I think I showed growth, I think I showed potential, and hopefully Alex and Eddie see that too. All right, guys, this competition has given each of you the opportunity to prove that you have the cooking chops and the on-camera charm to succeed as a Food Network star. But we have to send the person that we think can go back to Food Network Star and win it all. <laughs> Anna, tonight you took us back to Miami, and I really appreciated that. Thank you. Yaku, a great description of your food. So you took us home and, and got to know your family a little bit. Monterey, we love the simplicity of your food tonight, and we also love that you evoked feelings from your childhood back in Pittsburgh. We've reached the moment of truth. Only one of you can return to Food Network Star. So the person that we think has the best opportunity in Food Network Star is... The winner of Star Salvation will be revealed on next week's episode of Food Network Star.